Once you've finished texturing in Substance Painter, you will need to export the textures for all texture sets. To do this, File, Export Textures. Here you can select which texture sets to export. And at the top here, choose an output directory. You want to select your source images folder of your Maya project. Arnold is a PBR renderer, so we want to make sure this output template here is set to PBR Metallic Roughness. This will make sure we get the right maps. Lastly, we can change the size, which is the resolution of the texture maps we export. Click export when you're happy. If you chose a higher resolution, Substance will recompute and upscale the files without any loss of detail. Substance will tell you when it's finished exporting in the little console. Moving to Maya now, the most important step here is to make sure your project is set. Check out the video about projects if you're unsure. Open up your Maya file with your object. Hold right click over your object to head to the material attributes so we can start assigning our texture maps in the attribute editor. Let's start with color. Select little checker box to the right of color and in the create render node pop-up, select file. We can now select which file to drive the color with, with this little gray icon. Look for your base color of the texture set you're working on. If you don't see a change to your material, you might have to turn on textured with this icon or use six on your keyboard. You can return to the material setting easily by looking for this small arrow near the top of the node. Next up is metalness or metallic. Repeat the same process of assigning a file to this node. To make sure Arnold reads this map correctly, we're going to have to change some color space rules. With this color space drop down, change from sRGB to raw. Further down in color balance, make sure alpha is luminance is ticked. Returning to the material, next up is roughness in the specular section. This has the same color space rules as metallic. So once we've selected our map, again, raw and alpha's luminance ticked. Next up, we're gonna cover emission. This may not be needed for every single material, but if you do have it, we're gonna assign it to the color of the emission. Select a file like usual again. This one is a colored file so that we don't have to change any of the color space rules. Make sure you increase the weight here, otherwise your emission won't show up. Last map is our normal. We're going to go into the geometry tab here and drive the bump mapping. You'll see when you select file, it takes you to a different screen. Change this use as to tangent space normals and then go inside the bump value. Here you can assign your file just like normal. This again has some interesting color space rules. We're going to change the color space to raw and then we're actually going to have to untick our frizz luminance. This should conclude our material setup and our material should look exactly how it looked in substance. The viewport is not an accurate depiction of the material, so make sure you do an Arnold render. Don't forget to put some lights in the scene. If you have multiple texture sets like I do here, you now have to repeat the entire process for every single material. If you have a hard time remembering all the color space rules, you can use this handy little cheat sheet here, which I got from the Substance website. You can find a link to this cheat sheet and the tutorial it came from in the description of this video. As you can tell, this process can be quite tedious if you have a lot of texture sets. If you do have a lot, you may want to look into either getting a script to do this automatically for you or looking into the UDIM workflow. Again, always double check your materials in a render. This is where you'll be able to spot any problems. Usually these problems will either be missing maps or your color space rules will be wrong.